Hi everyone, so this video is about a question that I received from my last video and that was how to patch a multi-select value and so I just wanted to show you how to patch uh, many different types of column types from SharePoint. So in SharePoint I have a choice field called amenities. In my amenities I have a few different choices. I have the bench, boats, baseball, soccer, canoes. So it's just a, a checkbox, multiple selection for my amenities. I also have a couple more fields. I have a win field that I named, and that's a date and time, and then a rating and a score single line text fields. And the reason I chose single line text fields is because they could be numbers, right? But the only reason I would use a number field in SharePoint is if I wanted to use a calculation off of it. And since I don't want to calculate off my rating or my score right now, I'm just going to use a single line text field. So in Power Apps, I have my parks. In each of my cities, I have a icon where I can write the parks. So right now in Clemson, I have one park, JC Park. And I have in my text box uh, where I've written Dawson Park just to prepare for the video. In this uh, sheet, we have a combo box. We have a combo box. In the items, it just comes with city parks, but as you can see, it's blank because it doesn't know what should be in there. We have a date picker, a rating, and a slider, and then a button that I just renamed to my choices. So in my choice field, what I want to do to show all the choices from my SharePoint list is type in choices, in parentheses, do a bracket at my SharePoint list name, which is city parks, and I'm going to do dot amenities. And that should populate my selections for my drop down combo box. So the first thing I want to do is when I pick more than more fields that can show up in the combo box, it shows six items. So what I want to do is actually have a text field that displays the items that I have selected. So I'm going to add a label. And this label, I'm going to call it my am, or I'll call it variable var am, and that's going to be my variable. So on this combo box, what I'm going to do is I'm going to collect the values in the combo box. So the first thing I want to do when I get a new collection is I actually want to clear out that collection. I'm going to name that collection choices. And right now it's a red squiggly because it doesn't know that collection exists. After we clear out that collection, what I'm going to do is I want to loop through or do a full all statement. So this is going to loop through each one of our table items. And what's it going to loop through? It's going to loop through combo box one that's selected items. So for each one of our items that's selected, it's going to loop through. And what's it going to do when it loops? It's going to collect my choices. That's the table. And for each one of those, it's going to collect what? The amenity. The value. And that needs to be a caps. Value. So now, when I hit the My Choices button, it's going to collect that data. But what do we want it to do? We want to set it equal to my variable. So set, I named my variable var am. And this equation I found on Google. It's just going to concatenate my choices with a comma and a space. for each amenity with a starting place of three 
and how many characters long? I'll just say 500. Ah, I'm missing a parentheses right there because it's the parentheses of what are we going to concatenate. So now I have my six items. When I collect, it displays four of them because the combo, the label box is not big enough. Now it shows them all. So on my text field, I'm using that variable. And when I hit the button, it collects them. But we don't want to always uh, hit the button when we collect the combo box items. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy the on select of this button. And where am I going to put it? I'm going to put it in the advanced on change. So on change, it's going to clear my collection called my choices for each one of the ones that it's uh, collecting it's going to set them into a comma delimited text field so I can actually delete this button and now when I collect or remove it displays my collection in a nice text field so one other thing I just wanted to show you is that you could actually do the same thing with a list box. There's no difference between a list box and a combo box, it's just the way it displays it. So for my choices, at City Parks, my SharePoint list, I forgot my parentheses again. And show my amenities. So now the same thing is here. We just have a list box part instead of a combo box. So either one of these works. Just um, I think the combo box takes up less space even if you display it in a text field. Alright, but I'm going to get rid of this list box. I don't really want to use it. So now the trick is so how do we patch it back to SharePoint? It's pretty easy. What we're going to do is we're going to use our SharePoint column name, amenities. And what are we going to patch? The combo box one dot selected items. That's the only difference. It's just we're just selecting what we want to select. And for the date picker, well actually I named the column win for the date picker one dot selected date. That's the only thing that's different. Same thing for rating. We're going to pick the rating one dot value. And find the slider which is our score. That's going to be slider one dot value. So now when we're in our power app and we have a park name, we'll go back to Dawson Park we select a few items, we change the date, change the rating, change the slider, we hit the save button which patches, it writes directly to our SharePoint list. So you can see here Clemson, Dawson Park, our selection, the date, and the two values. And pretty much that's it. That's all you have to do to write a combo box of multiple items back to SharePoint. Um, if you have any more questions or you'd like me to try and figure some things out, uh, please let me know. I'll be trying to create a video every week. Thank you for watching.